Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. We're back, super excited. I've been trying to get this very cool young lady on the show for a while, Gigi Savilla, welcome. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Good I'm morning. so excited. I love your background. I love it. I mean, I need to get into the 21st century because my background is whatever. You look like you're on the beach. You got a pineapple back there or something, a palm tree. Um, so I'm very excited to have you. I love your spirit. The first time I met you, uh, I just think that you have so much going on. and You've got a great journey and a story. And I love this topic because I think a lot of people right now we're trying to fight for their dreams to come true. They're trying to figure out a way to maneuver through what the new normal is and maybe do something different than they did prior to COVID. So yeah. we want to hear all about your journey. So give us a little bit of origin story, Gigi. Awesome. Well, thank you again for having me, Ted. I think, um, you know, it's, it's a privilege um, to be here. So thank you. Um, so well, guys, I'm Gigi. <laughs> Some of you may know me. Um, well, I'm from Nicaragua. So I, I, was I didn't know that. Yes. Ta-da. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I was born then and I was raised here. So pretty much, you know, my family came here because we're following the American dream and um, which I'm so blessed and very thankful for. And um, it's, it's been a journey. But, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for where I'm, at, where I'm at right now. So where did my story start in real estate? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I want to know, when did you come? You came here, how, how early? Did you speak, do you speak both Spanish and English? I do. I came here when I was five. Okay. Had you spoken any English up to that point or did you have to leave? Not at when? all. Not at wow. all. Wow. So you had to learn it when you got here. Yes, yes. And so what was that like? Like, what were your parents trying? I, I always love this because I feel like that American dream is where it's at, right? So your parents obviously wanted you, wanted to come here because they also had a dream of having a better, different life. What was, what was, have you ever talked to them or asked them what was the reason or what was the motivation to go to a brand new country um, and start all over basically? Yes, yes. Uh, unfortunately, my country at that time was at war. It was in the 80s. So um, it was pretty much, you know, that we were just kind of escaping and trying to go to 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 start a new life because of, you know, that my parents didn't want me to be raised in that war and anything. So that's why we came here. <laughs> it's very tor turmoil oriented in uh, that area of the world a lot. And so we have a lot of people that come up here. I love, where did they choose to come? Did they come to Florida right away or did they go to another state? No, we actually went to Texas first. I don't remember much because I was five. I have like little bits and pieces. And sometimes when I would dream, I'm like, mom, I dreamt about this. She's like, yeah, we were there. So we started in Texas and then eventually we came down to Florida because we had a family member here and, um, just two years we then went to indiana so i was in indianapolis for about two three years i was like seven, that's eight. very cold for a nicaraguan girl and right very very cold yeah <laughs> <laughs> way too cold for me. Fun to me but I, I don't think i would be able to i don't live there right now as an adult i can't, I can't do the cold that. yeah all right so what did you want it when you got here and you had to assimilate into the schools did you did you begin to realize all right there's some things that i want to do your personality obviously began um to hold on we've got we've got funny people on asking oh somebody said hi by the way hi <laughs> um, but I, I feel like it you you probably had a dream dreams are big for you so early on did you know what you wanted to do um i had a couple things that i that i liked that i felt that i you know wanted to do i love fashion and then i wanted to i would get a computer i love computers and then i would pretend i was a teacher so I, I had a lot going on and what I wanted to do, but I think throughout, like when I was growing up, I'm like, okay, I really, really just love being around people. That was my, my thing. And I would always get in trouble in school for talking. So I think back in the day, it was like, you get a three or a one, it was like bad conduct for talking too much. I just love like talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You're a people person which is good. All right, so when did you begin to decide you wanna be in real estate? Real estate happened, well, let me count, um, probably like seven years ago now. 
And I just, I always had it in back of my mind. I'm like, I want to invest and I want to do real estate. You know, I think that's something I want to do. I just, um, I started as Florida hospital. So um, I was a medical biller and I'm so thankful I was actually there since high school. So everybody that wow. was like family, yes. So um, it was hard to let go. I actually had a goal. I said, okay, you know, I, I like real estate and, and I actually, my first course that I took that it kind of got me into it. It was poor dad, rich dad. So I went one yes. of, one of yes. the seminars. Oh, it's, it's amazing. So after that first seminar, I went to a second seminar and it just opened up my mind to kind of like real estate has a lot more to, to give, you know, that I can do yes. that. You know, I love being around people. I love helping. So actually, you know, I can do that with real estate. I just, to me, it was like, okay, I just want to do investing. So I decided in 2014, it was very tough. I'm like, okay, I want to go on my own and I'm going to resign at the corporate world. So it was very tough. If you about That's a lot when you go from a regular paycheck. Yes. And you take that leap of faith. What was the final deciding factor for you where you're like, all right, I'm going to fight for this. I think I can make my dreams come true. I think I can do this. Um, I, it was, well, they would give you like a pen, you know, like if you're there for five years, 10 years or 15. So we got invited to this uh, ceremony because, you know, I've kind of, I was there for 10 years. So I got a little pen and I would see people while well, 15, 20 years. And I'm like, you know, that's amazing. But in back of my head, like I loved it. I just knew I was ready for another level and I wanted to just be out in the world because I was in a cubicle. And I'm like, I, I want to be out. You know, I want to, I want to be with people and I, I did marketing as well, like on the side. So that was my deciding factor when I saw that little 10 year pen and I'm like, okay, I think it's time. And I thought of that three years before I resigned and I'm like, wow, it's hard because of benefits, because of everything. Cause it's just, it's, it's comfortable. difficult. It's comfortable. You know, you're, you're there. I've been there 10 years, but that was just like, it just clicked, you know, like, okay, this is the time because I don't want to retire at 65. That was actually what I thought. <laughs> I want to enjoy my life now and my freedom. And I was, I think, was I 30? I'm 36 now. What? Yeah, around 30, 29, 29, 30. So you, you decide, I think a lot of people right now are trying to figure out, that's why this topic is so great. They've had this opportunity. Maybe they've honed a craft. They've investigated something else they want to do. They want, they have a dream that they've never really put into uh, action, but now they're feeling a little bit empowered. It's still scary when you're going from a world, a COVID world, especially where a lot of people are furloughed, a lot of jobs get threatened to becoming your own boss, to becoming your own person and giving up that security and safety net. Mm -hmm. So when you did that, um, explain to them how that first week you made a million dollars in sales and your life's been amazing. <laughs> yeah, the first day. <laughs> the first um, day. I think, I think people get so caught up because they see somebody so poised and funny and engaging like you, and they don't realize that you were just as scared as they are to take that leap of faith. Yes, yes. Definitely one of the things is, you know, now that you mentioned, I'm glad you did, you know, a lot of people may be stuck right now. And I just felt like I know I needed to be, you know, I need to be out in the world. And I and I loved helping people and what I did because I, I was still helping people. But I decided I'm like, OK, what else can I do? So honestly, believing in yourself, it's very important, you know, and it's very tough when you you, you tell yourself, I don't know, it's scary. I, I, I don't think I can do. But. Honestly, the creativity, you already had it. So I've had like this deep, like um, I would say deep like session with myself. And I'm like, okay, Gigi, and I wrote it down and everything. I'm like, what do you really love? What have you loved since you're a kid? Since like, what have you always wanted? So I'm glad you asked that question because sometimes we're like, what do I want to do? You've always known. So just right. you've always had that creativity. And honestly, it's, it's just believing you can do it. And I just went for it. So what I did is, as I was working at, at Florida Hospital, I would still research on the side. So I, I wouldn't really sleep. I would maybe three hours, <laughs> five hours a, a, a day. But I knew I'm like, OK, let me kind of prepare myself. So, so I thought. 
And then when I got to a point, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. So believe definitely doing the research of where you want to go to. And even then, you know, I, even a lot of research that I did, I still, when I was out in the world, it's totally different. Right. So actually, let me tell you. So when I got out of the hospital, it was fashion. So that's what I'm like. I love fashion. Oh, fashion. Nice. Yes. That's yes. right. We talked about that, I think. Yes. Yes. So I had my own clothing line that I worked for three years. And I bought like everything, like professional machines. I sewed and then I found people. So I, on 2014, November, I resigned and then I was, I was ready, but I was working on the side doing that. And I think people, people underestimate the value of a side hustle. Side hustle has this, for, for whatever reason, it sounds like a negative thing. And I just believe it's so positive. It is. The, you're it is. working your full-time job that pays the bills, roof over the head, food, all that good stuff. And you're working a side hustle so that you can eventually replace what you're getting all your bills paid for with the side hustle because that's your that's your real passion your real dream your real goal you have to start somewhere so if you have if the creativity is already in you you have to believe it and you have to bring it out so actually i resigned 2014 and 2015 i made a big decision it was a mistake i think we all make mistake and it's okay on that first year that i resigned i lost everything and i literally became homeless homeless me and i lost my everything from my house everything the only one thing i was left with was just my car it just happened wow. to be there so i wow. started zero 2015. and what was that like so you took your leap these are good conversations so you took your leap and then for whatever reason you made an error in judgment. Those are your words. Mm -hmm. We all do. Like, you, how do you, you don't know this path. So everything you do is potentially risky, which is yeah. why people don't take the leap to yeah. begin with. So as you're, as you lose everything and you're at that point, you finally hit whatever that level is. What do you do to build out of that? What do you do to crawl out of that? Let me tell you, yes, it's tough. Cause I know I'm sure a lot of people um, are going through that right now or have been there. Yes, it's tough. Um, but I had to find myself again. I felt like I was just like, God, like swallow me whole. I want to, you know, just be out, out of this world. But honestly, like deep down in you, you know, you're a fighter. And that's why I said fighting for your dreams. So I feel like since I was little, I've been fighting, you know, I came here because of my country was in a war and I had to fight through in school, learn, you know, the language and everything. So we all have that fighting spirit. Why? Because if you woke up and you're whatever you do, you fought for it. So I just, this is what I said to myself, Gigi, you have to escape for your life. You have to pretty much escape from that where I was getting to, you know, like I was sad, I was depressed. I was like all these negative things that yes, it's normal. It happens. And it's so hard at that age to start again and all this thing I build up, but I just found that fight in me to do it. And mentors, I think it's very important. If you can't find a mentor in person, I, I like me, Tony Robinson's is amazing. I've never met the gentleman. I've never been to one of his, I haven't had the privilege yet to be in one of his uh, conventions, but I just started looking. I'm like, I need to escape. So I found things, you know, um, mentors online, you know, YouTube is great. There's so many things, just anything that kind of would just help me build up first. Why do you think, why do you think mentors were important? Did you have like, because I, I feel like people think, oh, well, what is that person going to tell me that I don't already know? Well, let me tell you, they're going to tell you a lot. Yes. But a lot of people don't know where to go find them. So you said you Googled them, you YouTubed them, you got involved, you did the research, even when you were in trying times, mm -hmm. you still continue to push forward. Do you think, do you get that from your parents? Is that something innate in you? Uh, where does that drive and that survival come from? Um, I think, yeah, definitely a little bit from my parents because, you know, being an immigrant here was not easy. Um, try to make it through. We've had to fight through many obstacles, but I think also aside from that, because I have seen experience, you know, you might have fighting parents, but then you just don't become that. I just have to, had to believe in myself. I am a fighter as well. And I just became that. I just knew that 
I just had to find solutions. So automatically it just triggered. So I think we honestly, we all have it. It's just finding it or just doing it. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's, you have it in you. You do. I think it's, I think it's there. I think a lot of people don't know how to bring it out or coax it out or they're afraid. They're too afraid. And I understand why uh, we're not judging you guys. It's, it can be hard to take that leap of faith and it can be hard to fight for your dreams because once you get there and once you realize it's all on you, mm -hmm. now you have to perform. Now you have to make it come true, which is the difficult part for a lot of people because they'll say, all right, well, I had this dream. I left my job. I left good pay, corporate security, and now I'm out on my own. Holy God, I'm a thousand percent responsible for my uh, my own success. Maybe I don't like that. So what was that like for you? You're out. You finally realize it's all on Gigi. Yeah. Well, I want to touch base a little bit on what you said about the mentor. Why is it important before I answer that quickly? Because that also helped me learn that I was a fighter. And what I loved about mentors, everybody has a story. So that's why I love your show, what you're doing, because that's what saved my life listening to other people's story like i'm like wow then i can do it oh you went through it too because i felt like i was the only one in the world that literally my story exactly to the t was i'm just the only one we feel like that but yes. that's why mentors they help i heard their story and all of them have a story where they explain where they started and where they're at i'm like i can do it i'm gonna fight for that Hello. i'm gonna be there so um that's big. I think it's very big. I think it's so important that you're you're willing to reach out because I think people get paralyzed, immobilized. They don't know what to do. And you just have to keep pushing through. You have to take, even if it's the tiniest step, like you uh, researching on YouTube, Tony Robbins or go to Tony Robbins or whatever it is, re, uh, watching videos that inspired you, shows that inspired you. You have to do something. That's a That's a positive step. That's a step in the right direction, even though it may not um, put a check in your account, it may not make a sale, but you're building this beautiful foundation that will take you to the next level that you want to make. Definitely, definitely. So the other question. Oh, uh, yeah, what was the other question? You keep going because I'm old and you're going to remember. So I no, you told me, I forgot. I'm trying to remember somebody in the audience help us. Uh, you know, this is the thing when we get in the conversations. It's just so important to go stream of consciousness because honestly, people love like you. I guarantee you like mentors and people who share, who are sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's what I think people need to hear because if, I'm not going to be motivated by somebody who told me I was born with a silver spoon. I've always had a silver spoon, and I haven't worked hard to get anywhere. I haven't failed. I haven't had any sacrifices. Nobody wants to hear that story because it just doesn't exist. But if you if you yeah. believe it, then you feel bad about yourself. And that's what happens with a lot of people who are trying to fight for their dreams. They don't have, they look at what's on reality TV or uh, maybe some star that they try to emulate and they don't realize the work that's gone into. It. Yes. And I'm glad you said that because that's what I learned. Yes, we've all had probably that mentality at some point that we kind of want it easy because we're like, oh, so tired. Life is so hard. Yeah, it sucks in a, in a way. And it, in a way, I thought it sucked. But then I, I realized that, no, actually the process. And I think Tony Robbins says that a lot, a lot of mentors learn to love the process. And I did because each time I went through something and learning, and this is where I got the opportunity. You know, like I said, I, I did the rich dad poor dad. I had a friend that was opening a, a office and then a school for real estate. And she's like, you know, well then come by because you know, come come to my office. Let's let you know be an office manager and and just start there. You know, and um, I said okay. So I did. That's how my story started with real estate behind the scenes, being an office manager, and. Um, so so I just like, OK, I'm going to take that leap. I'm going to do this. And to me, it was tough because I felt like I don't want to go back to the corporate world. I don't want to do that. But I felt like it really wasn't. I'm helping. And this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so that's how my journey started with real estate. I've loved it since I've learned so much in the process. I've learned that 
to me, the process is like feedback. So I've learned from feedback to get better, you know, and everything like, okay, um, I didn't say this the right way. I didn't learn this or why did I fail this? Okay, well, what did I need to learn to be better? So actually that feedback from that process, I've learned to grow. And ever since I took it that way, that's how I've grown and I've learned, okay, well, I made this mistake. I did this or what can I do better? How can I say better? How can I help my client better or myself? And you are telling the process will tell you exactly what you need to do to grow. So we can find mentors and I did it at some point. I'm glad you said about social media and all that stuff. Sometimes I had to like just block everything because I, I already heard all the videos, everything. And I'm like, <laughs> now I need to relax and stop. Which am I going to do first or which step? And what have I learned myself with this to, to get better or, you know, to escalate? <laughs> I, I love that. So you're doing well. You're doing well. What, uh, tell us a little bit about the business right now, people. Always that whenever I have a real estate professional on, I get questions prior to the show about tell us about the market, Gigi. What do you think about the market? So I never want to forget those people. They want to know what you're you're a professional, you're in it, you're in the you're in the trenches. What do you think the market is doing right now? I think the market is great. One of the things that I love and I tell people, you definitely have to be with the right people. I think, you know, I want to give props to everybody where I'm at in Giro Properties because it has helped me. I've learned so much through them and they're so positive and always 10 steps ahead. So I've learned to always be 10, 10 steps ahead. So before this happened, we already had like a meeting about this. So that's what I love. So I was already prepared and honestly, so it's a great market. I think that we just have to be creative. Okay. Now, you know, we have to wear masks. Now it's, you know, we have to be cautious and things, but okay, we can still do our, you know, our service, but now it's creativity a little okay. bit different. And just honestly seeing the positivity, you know, right now the market is great because yes, due to COVID, um, you know, the great thing is there's low interest rates. So let's take yeah. advantage of that. Let's take advantage that we can negotiate a little bit more. Sorry about, you know, incentives. That's the great thing about the market. So yeah, COVID came, but look at this great thing. I agree. I think that um, for any real estate professional out there who's not doing better, what I would say is reach out to me or to Gigi, because I think there there is an opportunity out there. And maybe it's just the way that you framed your marketing. It could be the focus that you have uh but the the overall market is so positive all right one last question before we head out uh when you hear the word hero who do you think of oh wow um hero i always think of my mom and Why is that? she's been a fighter and i think that's where i kind of get it from you know and just in her entire life her her life is like a novella. I told her you need to do a novel. <laughs> um, yeah, so and, and that's important to me because I've had her in my life and and it's just it's important to me. So her being a hero has helped me, you know, grow. So I really look up to her a lot and also I've seen I have a lot of other people that I see as heroes that I kind of see that same, you know, uh, gesture or personality that she has or, you know, just the way she is. And I'm like, wow, you know, that keeps me motivated and just admiring those people. And just, uh. <laughs> I love that. That's good. So guys, all of you that are watching, that's what gratitude day is all about. I didn't ask her who she was grateful for. I asked her who her hero was and she spoke her heart and basically thanked her mom. So there you go. Uh, Gigi Sevilla, you're amazing. I think you're doing great things. I love your attitude and the way that you approach business and frame things. I'm so blessed to have you on the show. So if you have, if you have somebody who wants to reach out to you, wants to learn more about real estate, what's the best way for them to reach you? Definitely. I don't mind. Please send me a message on Facebook. It's um, gilwardsevilla.com or just, you know, it's kind of tough to, to find that, but 305-989-7853. Honestly, I don't mind sitting down with you having coffee 
you know, I've had the opportunity to meet Ted and many other great people. And just that conversation has helped me a lot. So I don't mind doing the same as well. So contact me, text me, let's chat. Fantastic. All right. See how fast? Are you nervous still? <laughs> a little bit. No, no, it's good. Ah, no, you did phenomenal. Oh my God, it was perfect. It. You are. <laughs> So good. Thank you for sharing your heart and your journey with us. We really appreciate you, Gigi Sevilla, guys. All right. We'll see you guys back here later on today. Reach out to Gigi if you have questions about real estate, interested in a career in real estate. I mean, want to pick her brain, need a mentor. This is somebody who's going to put her heart out there. And I would love for you guys to uh, be able to be blessed by that. So thank you so much, Gigi. We'll see you guys back soon. Bye.